Hello everybody. Today we're going to look at the implicit differentiation section and uh, the sketching derivative section, but I'm going to do those in uh, two separate videos. So the first video, this one is going to be about implicit differentiation. And before we can do that, what we need to define is the difference between an explicit function and an implicit function. So historically, most of the equations and functions we've dealt with have already isolated y. So in the first one you look here y equals negative 2x. So your standard y equals mx plus b, it's the equation of a line. Over here we've got a rational function y equals square root of 3x minus 17 over x squared plus 5x plus 8. The values inside the variables doesn't really uh, matter. Essentially an explicit function has y equals and then whatever operations are being done to x are on the right side. Implicit functions, however, are not rearranged for y. And this should be a y here, not an x. <clears throat> so if you look at both of these, we got y squared plus x cubed equals 25, or x squared plus xy minus y squared equals 1. For both of these examples, it's challenging to isolate y, more so the second one than the first one. Because in the first one, we could move over x cubed and square root. And we've got y isolated, but there's a positive square root and a negative square root, so you have to be careful there. This one, much more difficult, you'd have to isolate your y's, factor out your y, and go from there. So what do we do in differentiation when we can't get y equals? Well, implicit differentiation is the process we follow, and it allows us to differentiate first, as the, uh, differentiate the function as a whole first, and then isolate your y primed after. So you don't isolate y at the beginning, you isolate it at the end. Here are five important rules, or really the power rule gets extended uh, in this case. So if we're doing the derivative of y, then that becomes dy dx, or that's y primed. We like to use Leibniz notation for this because it does help us organize each individual term a little better. And then, whenever you see dy dx, you can write out y prime. If you're doing y squared, so the derivative of y squared, two moves in front, times y, then times the derivative of y. So it's the chain rule combined with the power rule but we want to keep that dy dx there because there's no way to simplify it. That's our y prime. So this could be also written as 2y y prime and so on. When you've got different variables multiplied together, so x and y are the most popular ones, we would do the derivative of the first term, so x, right, and the derivative of x is 1 times y, so that's where this 1, this is essentially 1y plus the derivative of the second term times the first. So that's where x times dy dx comes in. So this could also be written as y plus x y prime, and so on and so on. So product rule, quotient rule, power rule all get applied here. The difference is whenever you're doing the derivative of y or d dx of y, you've got to write that out. You've got to leave it in there, dy dx. When you're doing the derivative of x, right, so if we're doing d dx of x, well that just becomes 1 because you get dx dx equals 1. So that's why we've never written that in the past. But when you see something else like dy over dx or dt over dx, you've got to write that, leave it in there as dy dx or whatever. So if you're isolating y primed, that's where the derivative comes from. So let's look at how that's done in an example. So this is an equation of a circle with radius 10, if you remember from 3200. <clears throat> so the derivative, the way I set it up is I always like to break it into pieces. So the derivative of the first term, so the derivative of x squared plus the derivative of y squared equals the derivative of 100. OK, 
Okay, so let's do the derivative first, and we'll worry about the equation of the normal line after. <clears throat> the derivative of x squared, we're not changing how we deal with that, that's just 2x. Plus, when your base, when your function y doesn't match what you're differentiating with respect to. So x, if this was d dy, then we'd, we'd treat it the same way as we did this one. But it's d dx. So that means power rule, 2 goes in front. And I just showed you this one up top. So we get 2y dy dx. So this is the extra part that always has to be added now when this variable doesn't match this one. So they could be, if they're different, this is always what you do. Equals, the derivative of any constant is always 0. So what I like to do here now is swap out wherever I see dy dx, that can become y prime. But you could leave it, you could just isolate the fraction instead of the single term. So I want to swap out my dy dx. And this is the part of the function I want to get by itself. So I got to move over my 2x, and divide by 2y. And then negative 2x over 2y just simplifies into negative x over y. So what this means is this is the derivative to any function or to this function anywhere on the graph. So we can get the slope of any line touching this circle. So the slope of any tangent is negative x over y. Now we want the equation of the normal line to this circle at 6, 8. So the tangent line okay so we got to use our point and the slope and xy is always xy anywhere in this equation so this xy we can use this point here as well so we will get y equals for tangent negative 6 over 8 x minus 6 plus 8 and then the normal line is the one we need y equals uh, reciprocal, so 8 over 6, x minus 6 plus 8. So that's a typical uh, implicit differentiation question where you're asked for the tangent or normal line afterwards. So you got to get your head around doing individual derivatives where you're dealing with more than one variable. Let's look at the next one. I'll leave the practice one for you for you guys and I'll do these too. So chain rule, only one part of it, or sorry, product rule, only one part of it is product rule, this middle part. x squared we just did, y squared we just did. There's no difference. So we set this one up again, d dx of x squared plus d dx of xy. And you can put brackets around what you're taking the derivative of just to organize it d dx of y squared equals d dx of 1. So we work through x squared, derivative of that is 2x plus. Now this is the product rule. So you can try to memorize it or you can work through it every time. It's always going to be the same. Derivative of x is 1 times y plus the derivative of y is dy dx times x. So this is your product rule right here, always for xy, minus y squared, so we got 2y, that's the derivative of y squared, times dy dx, and then the derivative of any constant is always 0. Now we've got to isolate y primed or dy dx, however you want to organize it. I like to swap it out. So I want to keep this, this term and this term on the left side, and the two terms that don't contain y primed go to the right side. So if I'm doing it uh, as a double step here, I'll leave y prime on 
the left side and I'll move over my 2x becomes minus 2x and my y is minus y. It's the only way to do these when you've got more than one term you need to factor it out. So you've got to group them on one side and then factor it out after. And then you'll always be stuck with a bracket with multiple terms in it and then that bracket gets divided on both sides. So we're left with negative 2x minus y over x minus 2y. I'm just going to move that up to the other side over here. And normally we like to show the division part x minus 2y x minus 2y and they cancel. So that's the derivative. There's nothing else you can do there. You could get the tangent line the same way before if we knew which values to put in for x and y, but we're not asked to do that in this case. On to the next one. This one uses chain rule and product rule at, at a point. So if we want to start over here, just so I can use all the space, take the derivative of the first term. And it's easier to put it in power form, so it's positive half, plus the derivative of the second form equals the derivative of 16. The first one, half goes in front. Take away 1, give me a negative half. Derivative of the inside is 1 plus dy dx plus, okay, second term, half goes in front to the negative half. Now the derivative of xy we've just done, so we're going to get y plus x dy dx and then that's going to equal zero. So the calculus technically is done. Now we need to do a little bit of simplification and that's where the negative exponent uh, make it a little bit tricky here. But what we want to do is distribute this term, so a half bracket x plus y to the negative half over these two. So this times 1 would leave it as is, plus this times dy dx would give me dy dx over 2 x plus y to the negative half. And that can become y prime. So instead of a complex fraction, it looks like a regular fraction. Plus, same thing over here, we want y over 2, xy to the negative half, plus x dy dx over 2, xy to the negative half, and that's still equal to 0. Now we want to isolate this term, the dy dx term, on the left side. So I'm going to change that to y primed. So I want y primed over 2, x plus y to the negative half, plus x y primed over 2, x y to the negative half, equals these two would get moved over. So we've got negative half x plus y to the negative half, uh, sorry, this one and this one, minus y over 2, x y the negative half. Now we factor out our y primes, so we get y primed outside of 1 half x plus y to the negative half plus x over 2 x y to the negative half. Right, and this is the tedious part. You got to write all this stuff over and over until it's simplified. This here can be simplified into negative 1 over 2 root x plus y, and this one can be simplified into y over 2 root xy. And the last part of this, we want to make a square bracket there instead, would be to divide both sides by this square bracket. <clears throat> so to do that you get y prime equals, so we got negative 1 over 2 root x plus y minus y over 
to root x, y, and then that's all over these two, which are essentially these two here with opposite signs. So we get 1 over 2 root x plus y plus x over 2 root x, y. So it's a bit messy there. It is uh, a little tidier in the printed notes, so you can take a look at those. But that's the way you would work through that. Again, any simplification beyond here uh, would not be required. But this takes us to the point where the calculus is done. So I did want to go through all three of those guided examples. I'll leave the practice set for you to do. And I'm going to uh, do another little video on the very last section, a much shorter video. Okay, so stay tuned. Bye for now.